What we're doing this evening is the first in a sequence of presentations and um, live experiments that demonstrate the key principles behind Orbo. Um, and this will be a sequence of four experiments in total. Uh, this will be the first one and, um, on that. And what we're going to do is to introduce the concept that you can have a classic electromagnetic interaction that suffers no back or counter EMF due to the motion of the rotor. Um, in order to demonstrate this, we have a relatively simple system. Um, it's a rotor which has four sets of permanent magnets arranged like this, as you can see. Um, the only other component of the system are the electromagnets. Um, and there are four sets of electromagnets wired in series. These are fed um, with a DC power supply and a switch. And what switches the DC power supply is an optical um, encoder disk. And basically, in the gaps here, um, we're providing current um, or we're opening up the voltage across the coils. In addition to the system itself, we have two measurement devices. We have a current probe, um, which is a classic uh, current probe. And we have a differential voltmeter. Um, and you can see the differential voltmeter here. Both of these are connected to a high-end tectronic oscill uh, oscilloscope. And uh, that's a DPO7104. And the first thing that we're going to demonstrate um, is that this actually acts as a normal electric motor, so that when we fire current through the coils, we get rotation. So I'm going to ask Max now to uh, turn on um, the switch. And as you can see, the system will start to speed up. It's rotating in a clockwise direction. Um, so nothing per se unusual about that. Perhaps the unusual components here are that we're using uh, toroidal coils and that classically most of the field in a toroidal coil is actually contained inside the coil. The next um, bit we're going to show you, and it's part of the unusualness of this type of interaction, is I'm now going to ask Max to invert the current in the, um, uh, that's been provided to the system. And we're simply going to do that by swapping the positive and negative input wires that you can see here. So if Max, you can do that. Back EMF is a consequence of Lenz's law. And basically, in a normal electromagnetic interaction or a normal motor, the rotation of the rotor causes a back EMF. And per Lenz's law, that back EMF induces a change in current that will oppose the motion. And you can think of that in a very simple way as a version of Newton's third law or the electromagnetic version of Newton's thir third law, that to every action, there's an opposite reaction. So on a normal motor, as the system speeds up, if you're providing a constant voltage, the operating voltage across the coils drops um, because of the counter EMF or the back EMF in the system. Uh, Max is nearly finished under pressure, um, putting the probe across here. So what we've done here is simply to take our DC voltage um, and swap the wires. So we're now showing, we've now got the current flowing in a different direction. So Max, if we can knock on the switch. And again, I'm just going to get the motor to rotate. And again, it's rotating in a counterclockwise direction. And that's quite unusual. And if we can bring up the uh, scope shot. Um, from the measurement um, systems, you can see the pulses are getting closer together as the system speeds up. The yellow probe, uh, the yellow trace, is from the current probe, and the green trace is from the voltage trace, uh, the voltage probe. The green trace is the lower one, if the color isn't that good. You can see a little bit of chatter um, as the pulse collapse, collapses on the green trace, and that's due to the, uh, due to the switch. So it's a very, very simple system. Um, but what is quite unique about it, Max, if we can take a speed reading, at the taco. Okay, so we have a, a simple taco, and what we can see is that the system is doing um, 789 RPM and, and continuing to speed up, and this will probably steady state at about um, 11, 1200 RPM. And if we can now focus on the oscilloscope. 
So what you will see here are the pulses um, that are being fired across the coil. And what I'm going to do is change the scale so that we can zoom in on um, one of the pulses. And I'll do that simply by doing this. And again, you can see it's a classic pulse, minor variation in the four pulse widths. What I'm going to ask Max to do now, if we can switch to the view of the system, is to use his finger as a brake to slow the system down. And now, if we can switch to the scope shot. And what I'd like you to pay attention to here is that as the Max will take his finger off the brake, and I'll just move this, the scope over, as the system starts to speed up, and we'll keep the shot on the scope, please, you'll notice that there's no variation in current or in voltage, current being the top, um, the top um, uh, trace and voltage being the uh, bottom trace as the system speeds up. And pretty soon we'll see that the pulse will come within screenshot. And what you'll notice is that there's no variation in voltage or current. Um, in a classical electromagnetic interaction, you would see the voltage begin to dip, and we're measuring the voltage directly across the coils, or of using a constant voltage supply, the current begin to dip. But what we will see here, and what we are seeing, is that there's absolutely no variation in the, and I'm just going to bring the scale in a bit, no variation in the actual operating current or voltage. And that's a very clear demonstration that this system suffers no back or counter EMF. One of the consequences of this, and this is the key element of Orbo, is that outside of counter EMF or back EMF and induction losses through, if we can keep that on the probe, please, as it speeds up. Um, outside of um, counter EMF and any induction losses through the electromagnetic interaction, that all the heat is, all the input energy is dissipated as heat. And this is one of two experiments that will demonstrate that in an orbo electromagnetic interaction, all the input energy is actually dissipated as heat, and yet we still get work done by the rotor. That work done by the rotor can then be converted into, electromag into electromagnetic energy itself or into current and voltage. The next experiment that we do, and this will be in the, in the January window, will be to focus on the other half of this equation. And the other half of this equation is whether the system suffers induction losses. And we'll be setting up an experiment to demonstrate that. And what we will demonstrate that due to the arrangement, there is an actually a minor gain in induction energy. The net result of this is really a proof and a key proof that Orbo is a technology and is an arrangement of, of magnetic components that can produce energy. Thank you.